Throwback Thursday 1967, The Future of Electric Cars and the Ford Commuta Concept Our thoughts from 1967 on Ford's tiny Commuta electric concept car, the future of electric vehicles as a whole and what would eventually replace the internal combustion engine. Although alternatively fueled vehicles, UFs, seem modern, the technology they employ is, in fact, ancient. The death of the internal combustion engine is a topic that has been discussed within the automotive industry since its very inception, but, until very recently, that discussion may as well have been held in an echo chamber. Now, nearly every major manufacturer is being proactive with replacing petrol and diesel, and significant sales growth is coming in. But it has taken a while. If you were to order UFs by their current likelihood of becoming the future of mainstream personal transport, I would argue the resulting list would go something like this, electric batteries, hydrogen fuel cells, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, FEVs, biofuel, compressed natural gas, CNG. However, CNG has been used to fuel vehicles since as early as the 1930s, the first ethanol, biofuel, engine was built in 1824, and the Ford Model T, 1908, could use it, gasoline, or a mixture of both, Porsche built the mixed FEV in 1899, the Armstrong Phaeton of 1896 had a petrol engine connected to a dynamo flywheel, which charged a battery, one of the world's first internal combustion engines, the derive as of 1807, was hydrogen powered, and that was applied to a car a year later, and experimentation. With electric cars dates back to the early 1800s, with experimental electric cars appearing as early as 1867. Back on June 15, 1967, we here at Autocar were having the very same thoughts about the future of automotive propulsion, although at a time when UFs were markedly less prevalent, and we envisaged Wankel petrol engines, gas turbines, or steam engines to be future possibilities. The car engine of the 1990s may not yet have been conceived, we said. Well, it's 2017, and we're still waiting for something else, so it looks, for now, like electricity will be the one as it did back then, as we took a view on Ford's tiny electric commuter prototype, a practical vehicle of limited performance, designed for restricted use in cities, rather as electric golf buggies are used around a particular golf course. A box on wheels little bigger just half the size of a Ford Cortina, yet in which four people could just about squeeze, the Commuta was powered by four 12V 18 AMP lead batteries, which gave a range of 37 miles and a top speed of 37 miles per hour. Just like a milk float, of which there were nearly 50,000 in the UK by 1970. Ford's announcement of the Commuta is mainly to put the present state of the electric car into perspective, we said. It is also to show that Ford is interested in tackling the problems posed and are pleased to let the public know about it. We could certainly envisage a future for the commuter. Suppose an area in the center of London were closed to all road traffic as we know it, we said. The authorities then place an order for 50,000 small electric public vehicles to transport people from and to perimeter garages to destinations and back. We do not doubt that something suitable could be produced at not too high a price, within five years. The same basic vehicle could be van, taxi, and self-drive car with maybe coin box payment. That electric cars produce no exhaust noise, virtually no fumes, and were far more reliable than internal combustion engines at the time also appealed although electric cars were not very quiet back then. Much the same reasons as we laud them now unsurprisingly, although the latter statement is now reversed. However, the issues surrounding electric cars which present themselves now were naturally even more obstructive in 1967, given the technology available. The only feasible electric car battery was a lead acid one, as more sophisticated units, such those made from silver zinc, achieved a much better power-to-weight ratio, 
but were far more expensive to produce and hugely increased running costs. Now, of course, we have the advantage of lithium-ion batteries, which were invented in the 1970s. And while there were suggestions of Ford experimenting with sodium-sulfur batteries estimated to kick range up to 200 miles, amazing even for nowadays little came of it, and after having spent some 10 million pounds, around 160 million pounds today, on researching electric car technology, Ford withdrew to await a breakthrough in battery technology just a few years later. Familiar wording With the exception of the electrical control equipment, electric car design has progressed very little in some 50 years, auto car lamented back in 1967. Now a great deal of research is in hand, particularly on power supply, which could lead to rapid developments. Alas, Auto Car and Ford's suggestion of having commuter-style cars commercially feasible by 1977 came nowhere near fruition, and we still await a true challenge to the petrol and diesel now, another 40 years on. But it now looks now more likely than ever that in half a century's time, we'll look back at fossil fuels as a long-gone anachronism. So here's hoping that nobody will be writing a throwback Thursday about this very article in 2067 to a similar tone as I just have.